Hi everybody, it's Pat Duckworth, the author of Hot Women Rock, How to Discover Your Midlife Entrepreneurial Mojo. And I just love helping women at midlife to find their mojo, to find that thing that will really make their lives just so special. And I just adore talking to other midlife entrepreneurs to find out what they were doing before, how they come to be doing what they do now, and to get their top tips so that we can all do a bit of what they do. So my guest today, I was very fortunate to spend some time with her recently when we were both at the Women Economic Forum in Delhi. And I also had the opportunity to hear her speak there. She's the founder of the Business Launch Portal, helping entrepreneurs to build scalable businesses so that they stop selling their time and earn a six-figure income and more and have a bigger impact. She's an award-winning international speaker, trainer, coach, and published author. She's won the public speaking Toastmaster competition twice on the European level. Her weekly business launch radio show regularly attracts thousands of listeners in more than 60 countries. Before becoming an entrepreneur, and we'll be asking her a bit about this, my guest worked for almost 15 years in different international leadership positions in marketing and change management. It became her mission to help people to realize their business dream so that they can speak up, scale up, and make a bigger impact. I guess we're all wanting to do some of that. So welcome, Monique Bloxall from Germany. How are you doing today? Great, Pat. It's an honor and pleasure to be here with you, as you know. We had a fantastic time in Delhi, and thanks for inviting me. Well, I heard you speak, and I just know that you're going to have so much valuable information to share. But we're going to start off asking about that early career. So were you working in corporate doing marketing? Yes, I was. And uh, I was not just doing marketing. Um, I was uh, specifically... uh, Yield and pricing manager for DHL Worldwide for quite a few years. So, um, yes, I previously was part of the corporate world as well. So did you go straight into that from college or university? What what drew you into that world? Well, yes, um, you know, obviously I studied economics and I'll tell you more about my story (laughs) as well later. But I studied economics, so it was pretty clear that I would, uh, you know, want to take one of one role. You know, that was like the normal career path, right? Once I started that, the question was, um, what did I want to do? And I thought, why not learn from the biggest? So I started in the corporate world right away, pretty much, yes. Yeah. And how did you progress through that then? What was your path up through the corporate field? In the corporate world itself, yeah. yeah. So the first couple of years I worked uh, with IBM um, and that was a pretty interesting experience because I didn't work with IBM directly, but I worked with a small subsidiary. And when I started with them, you know, they had about 100 employees. It was a service company in itself um, and uh, under the brand of IBM. And uh, one and a half years later, when I left them, we had grown from 100 people to 500 people. Wow. So that was quite interesting as a starting point, my first job really to, you know, kind of being a pioneer working in such a growing organization right away, which uh, probably I enjoyed because it uh, required a lot of entrepreneurial spirit in that journey. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the point then when you decided to move out from doing that into starting your own business? Yeah, that is quite something, right? How do we uh, choose to step out of you know, the world where it feels like, as they always say, um, you know, pretty much a career letter, you know, um, you know, or, you know, as they say, like a, like a, um, like a wheel, you know, where you, uh, you know, where you keep running, it looks like a career letter from the inside of the corporate world, right? Instead of stepping out of this golden cage, you know, making a lot of money, um, shining, driving a shiny company car and so on. It's not something that you do overnight or you yeah. decide right now, right? It is a journey. And I have to say that um, maybe one thing I say about myself as well that explains a little bit my background and my journey is I grew up in Eastern Germany. And in Eastern Germany, we didn't have entrepreneurs. People were state employed, resources state owned. So we had a few, but the majority of people were just state employed. So, you know, and before I turned 18, I found three different ways of making people happy and making money with it. 
And it's really funny, but I had this entrepreneurial spirit inside of me all the time. But as I said, I grew up in a world where there were no entrepreneurs. So I didn't think about the option of ever starting my own business. This is why probably also one of the reasons why I followed the normal corporate uh, career path. And then, you know, as I went forward, um, you know, I, my career was, uh, you know, uh, evolving and growing pretty fast. And, uh, you know, I had just turned 30 and I was already the global head of something. You know, I had teams all over the globe and I felt like I was an entrepreneur in a bigger organization. But then organizations changed. We went through a merger um, acquisition where the Deutsche Post bought the DHL. The whole culture changed and the organizations changed. And I saw more and more that I hit limitations. First of all, people were not treated the way I want us to treat each other on a human level. Then I felt like I, especially being a woman, you know, in a, in a leadership position in the corporate world, you always feel a little bit foreign because, hey, it is a male dominated world, right? And uh, that was not so much the issue, but also I felt like what I do on a daily basis was not, I didn't feel like that was something that I wanted to pursue for the rest of my life. And I didn't see a lot of purpose, neither a lot of learning and growth opportunities for me personally. And, uh, you know, then I can tell you what made the shift for me is that for many years, while I was in the corporate world, I was content, but not happy. Yeah. So there was always something missing. The purpose was missing. And you wrote this powerful book about purpose and, you know, and identity and, you know, all these kind of powerful things. And, you know, there was something major missing deep inside of me all the time. And I kept looking. I said, what would I do with my life if I could do anything? The normal coaching questions. And, you know, I never came to an answer. And I had several business ideas, but never really pursued them. Because, again, I was in a very golden, comfortable cage. Until the day when I was sitting at my desk. And I got a mail from a friend saying that Michael, one of my soulmates, had just died. Mm. At the age of 46. And shortly after, my boss, my manager, died at the age of 46 both leaving five-year-old children behind. Goodness. And then, you know, even thinking about that now, I was sitting at my desk and I thought, wow, you know, it was probably one of the most two drastic events in my life where I lost people that were really close to me entirely unexpectedly. And, uh, you know, even though we ask these questions in coaching sessions all the time, what would you like to do if you were not having an unlimited life? Suddenly it was real. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I had to ask the question, what life situation do I want to die out of if I have to die at the age of 46 or 50 or 60? So I really seriously started to ask myself these questions again. And I realized and I started to review my life and I looked at what did I do while I was younger? What did I dream of? You know, and I realized that I really if. You know, if ever I'm going to be a CEO, I want to be a CEO in my own business. So, um, you know, and then I said, I really want to learn and grow. And uh, I've done a couple of other things in the meantime, like building a public speaking club in Brussels, where I lived at the time. And I used so many skills and talents uh, building organizations like that. And I just realized how much fun I had doing it, you know, creating something out of nothing. And I thought, hmm. I want to learn what it really takes to build a business on my own. And that's why I stepped out in 2010, you know, close to seven years ago. Um, you know, I left my corporate job behind. And to be honest, the moment I stepped out of that office and that day, I felt that for the first time in many years, I'd been on the right path again. Fantastic. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm interested in that moment where, you know, you've had a successful career. You've built this strong identity behind your role in corporate life. What did it feel like the first day when you were working for yourself? Did you have to do any grieving process for the bit that you'd left behind? Or were you just too excited about what was in front of you? I don't know what it was for you, Pat, and I know for every single person it's different, but for me, the, 
you know, the, the, the grieving or the, you know, having to leave something behind um, was, it, it, it had started for me to happen many, you know, quite a few years before that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people um, go for building their own business because either they were fired or they had a burnout and things suddenly happened very fast for them. For me, it was different. For me, it was a long time process to say, what do I want to do with my life? And I made a very conscious decision. And I, you know, of, of course I had savings. So it was not like I was forced to become successful overnight. I had time to actually find myself rebuild what I wanted to do, try out things. I had a financial freedom to do this. So, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I built a bridge while I'm still in the corporate world and then I go. Um, for me, yes, that emotional building the bridge and the mental building the bridge to get ready happened while I was in the corporate world. But yeah. building the business happened when I had already started to step out. Yeah. But there was no grieving. There was no, you know, all of that had happened beforehand already. Yeah, yeah. Great. So this is Pat Duckworth talking to Monique Blocksill. And um, so I'm hearing all of this passion for what you do. And I know how passionate you are for it. But I'm going to ask you first about that entrepreneurial spirit. Was there any entrepreneurial history in your family? Or where do you think this spirit came from? No, there was none, to be honest. Um, you know, my parents, uh, like a, a lot of people um, in that generation, actually, my dad, he did a professional training when he was 15, uh, 14, and uh, he worked in this company until he retired. Same with my mom. So no, there was no entrepreneurial spirit. It was more probably coming out of myself. As I said, before I turned 18, you know, for example, when I was 14, I started to trade um, you know, rock star and, and film star posters, you know, so and I made money this way when I was 18 uh, I started to sell insurances and I even had other people working for me and with me making money on my behalf selling insurances for me So um, for me, it was always just fascinating uh, Different aspects of being an entrepreneur first first of all Really understanding what drives people what do people need? And I've always had the mental attitude of serving others, mm -hmm. you know, uplifting others, helping others. But I also always had a very much a business sense to say, once I do that, business is value exchange. Meaning that when I give something, I expect something back, you know, unless from either side it's clearly stated that it is a free offer for each other or it's a gift, right? Mm -hmm. But a business is always a value exchange. So no, I didn't have that, um, you know, kind of parents or uncle or anyone else that really were entrepreneurs. It was rather coming from inside of me. Um, and the first people I remember that I met that started to run their own business, that was when towards the end of me going through my university studies, there were two students that I knew that built their own travel agency. And I always thought, wow, how amazing. They're doing something on their own. This is so cool. But again, at that time, I was not ready to see that as an option in my own life. Yeah. So it was more driving me, more really understanding, you know, who am I? What, what can I contribute to this world? What do I stand for? What value do I, what values are important to me? What difference do I want to make? Um, you know, how can I live a more fulfilled life? How can I serve more people? How can I, you know, do something that is more purposeful, more valuable? How can I leave a bigger legacy in this world besides earning billions to a company I work for? Yeah. It was these kind of questions that got me to go on to this journey. Fantastic. So for women who they're not sure what their purpose is. I mean, I always ask women I'm working with, you know, if you have a purpose in life, a reason to be here, what is it? And some have been clear on that purpose since they were very young. And for others, it's a new question and they're really not sure how to answer it. Any thoughts for firstly, how you discovered this really strong purpose about helping other business owners and, and, any tips you would give for how other women can find that really strong sense of what it is they want to do? Yeah, I, I love this question. I know it's one of the hardest questions to ask really for a lot of people. So let me start with giving you my purpose statement. And it's pretty much in line with, uh, you know, with my business slogan, so to speak. 
Um, you know, my purpose is really to empower people and especially entrepreneurs to speak up, scale up and make a bigger difference with the business they care about. They'd really bring the project for what they care about. Speak up, give them a voice, discover their voice, become more visible, scale up, do it like not as a one man show, but really build a, a structure, a business structure around you so you can make a bigger difference and then go out there and do what you care for. And don't do it on your own, do it together with others. As I said, build a business structure that allows you to not just be a solo entrepreneur, but really that you can make a bigger difference out there and serve not just a few hundred people, but thousands, if not millions. So I'm always thinking bigger. So that's my purpose. And, uh, you know, how do we discover that? Um, I would say that there's always two questions you could start with. One is, you know, really, why do I do what I want to do? Okay. What is it for myself? Um, you know, what life do I want to live? What difference do I want to make? You know, it's more like, why me? Why, why do I want to do it? What, why, you know, I, a lot of people say, why do I want to become an entrepreneur? It's like, you know, a lot of people say, because, and Pat, you probably recognize a lot of that in yourself. We want to do something we care about. We want to have freedom, freedom of time, freedom of making choices, who to work with and so on, doing something that's valuable to us. So, you know, we also want to make money and, you know, we want to make more money than we can make in an employment job. That's also a driver for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it's really the question of why do you do it for yourself? And the second thing is, why do you do it for others? Ask yourself, who are the people you want to serve, right? And why, you know, and here is a suggestion. Um, if you're not sure of what your purpose is, start asking the question, what would my ideal world look like? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the world would be the perfect place, how, you know, what, what would people do? How would they talk to each other? What would they do? How did, would they treat each other? Um, you know, what would take place? What, what would happen? And then ask yourself, if, this, if you wanted to contribute to creating this ideal world, what would you want to do? How would you want to contribute to this? What difference would you might like to make? And then another suggestion, ask yourself, what are maybe two personality qualities, you know, what, what makes you you, you know? Like for example, me personally, I have a business mind, and at the same time, I'm very caring and loving, um, you know, and I'm a great speaker. So, you know, and then ask yourself, um, you know, what do you like to do? Like for example, I love to inspire and empower people, right? And then, you know, um, and then you bring it together with your view of what the ideal world is. And you say, for example, in my case, as I said, you know, I use my business mind and my love and care for people and my, my serving spirit and my skill to communicate in powerful ways, you know, to inspire and empower others so they can, they can speak up and scale up and make a bigger difference so they can bring their business purpose forward in bigger ways. Fantastic. I love it. And, you know, I've heard you speak about making an impactful pitch and, you know, the steps mm -hmm. that you give to that are just so great because, you know, bringing that together with the speaking side of it, um, I know a lot of women who don't feel comfortable about standing up and doing their pitch. Even, you know, they put themselves off of doing networking meetings because they don't even want to stand up and do their minute. Mm. Well, as a therapist, as well as an entrepreneur, I can help them with a lot of that. And with your business side of this, it's really creating that powerful pitch so that when they're talking about their business, it's with all of that passion and all of that, their values and their beliefs, uh, so that they can really sell what they're doing in a way that's congruent with who they are. Yes. Yes. I, it's so important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, women, if you're hesitating and not, not going out there networking because you're worried about standing up, get some help, see a coach, talk to somebody like Monique or myself. So you can, you know, if you're passionate about your business, you could be out there telling other people they deserve to hear about your business, get some help. Absolutely. So Monique, if anybody watching would like to know more about you, about your business, how can they contact you and find out more about you? 
Yes, thanks for the opportunity, Pat. So uh, you just touched on a very important point, um, and that is pitching. It's really knowing what to say and how to say things to really convince anyone of anything almost every time. Clients, partners, investors, anyone else. So if you're serious uh, to go ahead building a business or making your business scalable and becoming more visible, um, what you could do is you could check out my website. It's very simple, moniqueblocksill.com. Um, on there, you also find a checklist on how to pitch with impact. It's free. You know, I really invite you to go there and download it for, download it for yourself. Just last week, I worked with quite a few entrepreneurs again to help them put their pitch together to get investor funding. But you might not want to look for investors. You might just want to convince more clients. Again, I invite you go to the website and download that pitch checklist. Also, you can find me on LinkedIn. Just refer to Pat and the wonderful work she does in our interview here and say, hey, I watched this, uh, your interview with, uh, with Pat. Um, you know, I'd like to reach out to you. So find me on LinkedIn, send me a request, and I will be happy to be there for you and discuss, uh, you know, how you can start and grow your business yourself. So you can speak up, scale up, and make a bigger difference yourself. Fantastic. And yeah, do go and download that list. I, I've downloaded it. I'm learning all the time. So yeah, get there and download that list and um, follow those contact details. So this has been such a joy, Monique. I hope we get to spend time together again soon. I hope so too, you know, in daily or somewhere else uh, on the planet, online and offline. Yes. We both love speaking, so we'll find each other somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> Yes, we will. So, to all our viewers, thank you very much for watching and keep watching out for more of these wonderful interviews with these entrepreneurs who've got so much to teach us. Thank you. See you again next time.